Hello everyone, I'm the Anthapo, and today we're taking a look at Vault 19, one of the many vaults in Fallout New Vegas. It can be located here, just west of Whitaker Farmstead or east of Booney Springs. It is located among a lot of death claws, so if you're trying to get to it, make sure you stock up on ammunition. So you're going to enter the vault, and you're going to unlock the door yourself, as this has inhabitants, not the original vault's inhabitants, but inhabitants nonetheless. As you progress further in, you're going to see a sign pointing to two separate overseer offices, and there's a reason for this, also a clinic and a canteen. Now, this is actually inhabited by convicts, but first of all, we are going to go and talk to one of them. This man is one of the leaders, one of the overseers, if you will. His name is Philip Lynn. You're not one of us. What do you want? Fucking Cook has us trapped here. After we escaped from an NCR prison, he dragged us around the wasteland until we ended up in this shit. A group of us want to leave. Go back to the NCR and surrender. Cook organized the breakout. But he's just an overambitious prick who's gonna get us all killed. So you immediately learn that there's two factions within this vault. Samuel Cook leads one of them and Philip Land the other. Now, on a terminal you can recover some data. First of all you have to hit the recover data button and after that you can read the, the corrupted data. It says fake medical records, paranoia induced by non-violent and non-chemical means, and it's saying it's the only way the test is going to actually go through. Also, there's an elevator hidden under the desk in the room, which we will come to later. But immediately we learn that the convicts want to leave. There are two groups, and there's one other one called Samuel Cook. We're going to go and look at Samuel Cook now, who is the one who orchestrated the breakout, which you heard about at the start of Fallout New Vegas. He's the man standing in the corner looking at the wall over here. Who the hell are you? I know you weren't one of the inmates. That coward Lim has been talking about surrendering to the NCR. Now the men are confused, not sure who's leading this gang. Fucking idiots. So the men are apparently all a bunch of fucking idiots, and this man and Philip Land control the entire vault. Now there's two overseers and there's a reason for that. The entire vault is split into the red and blue faction. The red faction and the blue faction. So the red sector door needs a red key. And the blue sector door, as you can see here, needs a blue key. Now, those keys can be got off Philip Len and Samuel Cook, respectively. Yeah, what do you? If you can find a way to cut off access to the sulfur in the caves below. Thanks. Take his key card. I tried hacking the locking mechanism. Later. So he asks you to cut off access to the sulfur caves below, which will come into play later, and gives you the blue key card to do it. Now, you get the red key card from Samuel Cook. Now, there's really only one way to do this, and that's pickpocket him, because he doesn't let you do it out of any mission. And frankly, he's a bit of an arsehole, so you shouldn't really feel any type of sadness or guilt from doing it. Also, you don't lose karma. So, also there's a clinic. Here you can find medical records, one under this shelf, the other one located underneath this shelf with the saw on it. The next underneath a chair. The following under the desk. And the final one is underneath a paperweight on the desk. Now, these are all the fake medical records, but actual real medical records of the patients. The first one is a patient who believes that they are hearing voices that are taunting them, and now I believe the voice comes from within themselves, and they want health. The second patient is one who claims that they would feel having out-of-body experiences and that they can't really navigate through the clinic or walk without any help or aid. The last one is just someone who suffers terror attacks, which is relatable to more a normal illness, if you will. The third one, sorry, the fourth one, they just say they're brought in, doesn't give any information on the actual sickness itself. And the fifth one is someone who thinks that every single, well, act of kindness is um, patronizing, they're hostile to everyone, and that's made worse by getting in contact with another patient who's defensive. So these shed light on some of the inhabitants of this vault, they all had some type of mental condition or problem. So first of all, you're going to go into the red sector. Now, this has several terminals that have entries from people, and you can also get more keys, but at this point there's not much use for them. So first of all, there's a message from the overseer saying that there's nothing wrong with the water purification filters, now, people probably made a complaint, and this is the whole thing about the vault, the paranoia. People aren't sure what's going on. So first of all, someone says they can hear voices coming through the intercoms. 
people have talked about it, the kids can hear it as well. So there's voices coming through the intercoms, and when you've seen earlier, the non-chemical and non-violent means, they're trying to find ways to make people paranoid, and that could be one of them, making them think they hear voices. Never confirming it, always denying it, the people presume because they have other people to support them. Now, one of the other rooms, you can also get another one of the journal entries. They say one of the blues is creeping about by the door, they're being a creeper. So people are mistrusting of the other sections, in this case the blue section. The, final, the other terminal here has some more entries which further sheds some light in this. So they're saying that when they walk up to a group of them, the cafeteria, they all start whispering that they're plotting what to do next. The reason why they probably don't want to talk to them is because they, people who are whispering, think the person walking up to them is also being paranoid, they think they're going to do something. So everybody distrusts everybody else because of the paranoia that this vault has instilled. The final terminal has two logs. The first one is people causing trouble, trouble at the clinic. People think they're trying to steal poison to kill them all, which, you know, is a very, very um, radical paranoid thought, but this vault has harbored and nurtured thoughts like that. Then people are saying the only place in the whole vault that's safe from the poison gas is her office because she never leaves it. So even her actions, the actions of the nurse, are instilling paranoia among the people. Now the problem with putting a bunch of paranoid schizophrenics in a vault and then doing actions, just tiny ones to drive them insane, never really ends well. After that you can take the elevator down. Now here you're going to find a lot of fire geckos so please have some type of ammunition that will let you kill them or weapon. There's only one room with a collapsed ceiling, what sounds like a mouse, and then you can get one terminal in here. Now, this terminal has some later entries than the other ones, 86. Then they can hear voices through the vents, maybe everyone has a disease, maybe the whole vault is sick. Now the voices through the vents may in fact be the fire geckos because if it was built in caves and the geckos tunneled inward, and that's the most likely result. The fire geckos are what people are hearing talking, but it could also be the point of the overseer because the whole point of the vault was to make people think they were crazy or paranoid. After you kill them in here, you can get a hole over here which you can enter, but we're not going to go there just yet. Now, we're going to take a look at the blue sector. Now, in the blue sector, there's also more terminals, and this time the paranoia is always directed toward the reds. So, this time someone thinks the bulletin board is trying to speak to them, that it's sentient and it's trying to communicate with them, or the reds are using it. Either way, it's a very strange thought. And then they think that the flashing or broken fluorescent bulb is SOS, which is equally crazy, but, you know, paranoid schizophrenic, you can't really reason with that in any way, shape, or form. Now, after that, there's only a few more terminals, and then you're going to get the lower part of this section of the vault as well. So, through here, you're going to see another, you're going to see a whole mess of messages. So they're saying they don't trust the bodyguard, the doctor, because she's got bodyguards. Why does she have them? Most likely to keep her safe from paranoid schizophrenics, but they don't know that. Then they're trying to break into her computer, showing that their trust has gone so far that they're willing to risk getting in trouble to find out what's going on. After that, they find out that they all think they're insane. People say they don't remember being insane, that they're being drugged. But, once again, they don't catch on to the fact that maybe that is why she wants the guards because she's afraid of them, not because she's trying to do anything or keep anything from them. Now, after that, they think it's all trapped inside their head, and they starts, it starts going a bit of a sick rant at this point. Then they say that they managed to distract them and get enough sedatives to kill a f They find sedatives to kill a horse, and then she's just going to try and kill them. At this point, they're sort of just making the crap up. There's no real evidence for this. Then they tried, to get, they got chucked out of the clinic, and they tried to talk to the overseer, but being in on it, the overseer denied them any information, as would be the regular course if you're trying to cause paranoid schizophrenics to go insane, but, you know, fair enough, he probably didn't want to get attacked either. Now, the final one I find is very interesting, here. So, it's another journal entry, they say they couldn't sleep, and they found that a filtration system was coming on, about five minutes, air conditioning, sorry, I mean. But when they um, asked somebody else about it, they too could hear it as well, as you'll see in this one. So the people suspect they're poisonous. Now, this makes me think it may have had something to do with the sulfur caves, because as the caves were actually there in the first place, it can mean the air filtration system was broken, bringing in sulfur, and it was making everything worse, which would have actually contaminated the experiment, as it would have been a chemical means. Now, 
once you've dispatched any fire geckos that are in the area, you can actually find a room with quite a unique little object that you may not expect. It's a Sunset Sarsaparilla Star Bottle Cap. Now the weird thing about this is it actually made this person even more insane or paranoid. They think they've found something. First of all, they think that the broadcast is messing with their brains, which is impossible, but, you know, people are weird. Then they think the Sunset Sarsaparilla Star is some type of conspiracy plot. What are they doing? What do they mean by this? Why, have he, why has he got it? He doesn't understand. Now, the funnier thing about um, this little star is in another terminal entry, later on in here, you can actually find uh, someone saying that they want that Sunset Sarsaparilla Star Bottle Cup. Okay, it's theirs, they want to take it. So first of all, it's the Reds over here walking around, mumbling to himself, not really making the Blues feel better. But this time, he's saying he wants the Bottle Cup, he doesn't know what it's for, but he knows he wants it, he needs it. So it's little things like this that eventually lead the people to get a bit more paranoid. Maybe not even intentionally, maybe he was given it on purpose, but it led to paranoia. So, after all that, you can enter the Sulphur Caves. There's two ways to go. If you go straight to the right, it will bring you to the point in which you need to set the C4. Now, there's fire geckos in here and some Night Stalkers as well, so you need to be careful of that and prepare accordingly. So, it's this big rock here. Okay, so you go up to it, you activate the micro line lock, and you can put the C4. C4 can be found or bought inside the vault, so you don't really need to worry about that. When you go back to the actual entrance again, if you go straight ahead, it will bring you into another section of the vault, which based on the computers and the generators was most likely the reactor or the subsection of the vault, which would explain why sulfur gas would have been pumped into the vault. It was because everything down here was broken. So after this, you can go in and get to another terminal, one of the last terminals really. Now, this one will give you one more diary entry. So they can always hear weird noises coming from above the room. This was definitely the fire geckos. At this point, it was the tunneling. The system wasn't great, or they were they were or were not aware of this when they made the vault. Probably not, because the fire geckos wouldn't have actually mutated at that point. But if you go to the left here, you can actually gain access to an area of the overseers, a hard locked door. After that, you can break through the terminal, and this will then open up the secret door that was spoken about in the terminal in Philip Land's office. Now, this isn't really much use apart from a shortcut, but it's interesting that this whole sort of secret compartment that went outside the vault was there. Now, after that, you actually can go outside of the vault, and you actually see this is sort of an extruded part of the vault. It went into this cave system. Now, the cave system may have formed around it after all the activity that would have occurred after nuclear explosions, but it's unlikely because the vault sustained little to absolutely no damage. Now, going up this ladder brings you here, a secret area, it's not on the map, it's unmarked. You may notice it because it's in the outskirts of New Vegas. Now, as you'll see here in the world map, it's just outside of Whittaker Farm. Uh, Farm. So that's that, that is Vault 19, a vault that was purposely made in order to see how much they could drive people insane. People with previous mental conditions, but see what would happen if they put them in two different groups. Most likely the Sunset Star of Sarsaparilla Bottle Cap, the air conditioning, the guards, everything was meant to drive them a bit crazier, but I don't think the sulfur gas was intentional, I think it was an accident. So I hope you enjoyed the episode, please like, favourite and subscribe if you did. Leave a comment below for any future episodes and suggestions for what, I, what areas I could do next. Please, I'm sorry that I left this so long, it won't happen again, I'm really going to pick up these ones, but I did want to try other stuff on my channel. So I hope I will see you in the next episode, and goodbye.